And Jeff, thank you. Um, about this matter of disclosure, uh, you know, this is, it's, it's an issue that people have been talking about for many years. It's a contemporary issue as, um, as it's relevant to this, this matter of uh, Will Smith and his son um, speaking with President Obama recently. And it goes, bar, it goes back as far as the uh, Disclosure Project. I think the original one was first held in 2001. Uh, Stephen Greer, Donald Kehoe, Bob Dean, a bunch of mil ex-military intelligence guys, all sorts of people who were avidly, at least at that time, endorsing the concept of governmental disclosure. And I guess some people today are still... Um, endorsing that concept as well as anxious for something like this to happen. Now, what I'll do is give you my own perspective, uh, and, and certainly that's the perspective of the, um, the, the people in the Andromeda Council that, that I'm in communication with all the time. Here we go. Disclosure, at least as the way I understand it, is a government entity like a US government or a Canadian government or a British government um, because I live here in the States I'll just address it from the perspective of the United States uh, the US government official position that people have known about for years is UFOs and ETs don't exist the whole Roswell matter was a series of or was a balloon you know, weather balloon kind of thing they have always stood by the position officially that UFOs and people of extraterrestrial origin don't exist. Now, as long as they stick to that position in their minds, they hold the high ground. Because they've been telling people for years, UFOs and extraterrestrial people don't exist. That's their official position. Moreover, they have no incentive to change that position because if they change that position and openly acknowledge that UFOs are simply means to travel, they are just like airplanes or buses or anything else. They're means of flight. But moreover, that they belong to people of extraterrestrial races and they acknowledge that these people exist, then they will also acknowledge in a de facto manner that they've been lying to the public for years, consistently, over and over and over again. And from a position of power, I don't think that any entity would ever acknowledge that they've been lying to their constituent public. Providing open governmental disclosure doesn't give them any added power than they already have today. So it's my belief you're not going to see any governmental disclosure or acknowledgement, formal acknowledgement of UFOs or ETs, extraterrestrials, or interdimensional people. Um, now, my only caveat to the statement is, as we get closer, the collective we all of, it, all of us get closer, and that moment in time happens where people start to hear about extraterrestrial people meeting with citizens all around the globe and it starts to happen more and more you will likely see the governments governments plural start to open up and acknowledge these people these extraterrestrial people the interdimensional people that will be visiting with the people of earth i doubt that they'll do it on their own ahead of time it might happen where as a metaphor a car pulls up to an intersection and meets another car. You can't dispute the fact that there are two cars there. Um, that's the, uh, the best kind of analogy I can give, but uh, I don't feel, I certainly don't feel pretty strongly that, uh, that you're going to see open governmental disclosure simply because it does two things. Um, it would change their position of power, which they have right now. They've been telling you know, the, uh, the storyline for years, that they don't exist. And if they did that, they would be admitting to a greater public that they've been lying. And that's never a good thing. So that's, that, that's my position on, on this issue. 
Now, there are sources that are reporting right now that a series of arrests, and some are even saying mass arrests, are taking place. They're, the sources are reporting a large number of resignations, especially in the financial and the banking industry of late, and this is expected to begin expanding into, into other, uh, other industries. Is the Andromedan Council uh, participating in any way uh, with what people are calling the Earth Allies to help facilitate these changes in, in governmental structures and removal of people from various positions? Hmm. Okay. Um, if we delved into all of the pieces that address this issue, it could almost be a 45 to minute hour conversation. So I'm going to try, I'm try to give you the, the, the brief version. Um, recently, within the past month and a couple of weeks, the people of the Andromeda Council took over and cleared out the last undersea reptilian base on this planet. Why is it relevant? Well, it's relevant because there were a um, hundred plus cabal illuminati either reptilian and or reptilian human hybrids that were top officials in those so named organizations they've been sent off planet they're awaiting war crimes tribunal on an andromeda council biosphere the primary one now why is it relevant well it's relevant because to use a metaphor if a malevolent organization is a snake, and the head is the top of the snake. The Andromeda Council has just chopped off the head. Keep in mind, all of the underground and undersea bases have now been taken out, destroyed, and or cleared out. All of the reptilian military officers and reptilian human cabal Illuminati officials have been taken prisoner off-planet, are, are now awaiting a war crimes tribunal off planet. This represents the reptilian side of the cabal power structure that's been directing from the top down the human side of the cabal Illuminati structure. So what you're addressing is the human side of the cabal Illuminati structure that David Wilcock and Benjamin Fulford and those guys and others have been talking about. Now, as they say on the website, I don't have any either peripheral knowledge or in-depth knowledge about what those guys know because I don't know any insiders regarding the human side of that cabal Illuminati equation. Now, all of that having been said, do I believe that the taking out of this last reptilian undersea base having those top cabal reptilian Illuminati officers and officials go off planet for war, tribes, war crimes tribunal? Is it relevant to the arrests that are likely to happen on the human side of this equation? Yeah, I certainly think that the two are related. But I don't have the information. I don't have the inside information that the, the David Wilcox and the Benjamin Fulfers of the world deal with because... That's not my area of expertise. My knowledge comes from the people that I speak with on the Andromeda Council and what they tell me about the actions that they've taken. Is there anything that you feel the Andromeda Council would like people to know about them? Mm, sure. Well, it, it, actually, it actually ties into the, the last question and answer. Um, and, and I forgot to tie in this piece, but it's relevant. The, the people of the Andromeda Council, and more specifically the, the aligned planets of the Andromeda Council, decided to step in uh, on behalf of the people of Earth because this malevolent reptilian race has been uh, terrorizing and subjugating a number of planets throughout the galaxy. As I understand it, there are 20 others with at least three that are much like Earth. And 
one of the reasons that they've stepped in is that as Earth continues its process of change and starts to transform and become a higher dimensional world, the people of Earth have a right to be free, sovereign people and no longer under um, this, if you will, the sl malevolent slave dictatorship of the, the, the subversive reptilian race as well as their cabal, Illuminati, human counterparts that have been pretty much been pulling the strings having to do with power and finances on this planet for a long, long time. And we have a right to live as free, sovereign people. We have a right not to be a slave race. And so the war in space, the efforts on the part of the Andromeda people led by the people of Procyon, it has been a war of freedom to free the people of Earth so that we could, so that we can evolve as, as free and sovereign people and make this transition to become a higher dimensional world without getting um, further harassed or abused or manipulated, and there are a lot of other words that I'll, I'll not use here, but um, severely, severely abused by not only the, the reptilians, but their human lackeys. We deserve to be, to be free, sovereign people and not live under the kind of system that we've been living under for hundreds of years, as long as certainly money has been used as a way to leverage people's, leverage people's lives. So that's one answer. Uh, the other answer is the reptilians had a long-term plan to reptilianize the whole Milky Way galaxy. And I know it's almost incredulous to believe this, but they had a long-term plan in place to make all human worlds reptilian. And whether... Um, whether, as an example, whether people are Nazis trying to attempt genocide of another race, or any people they, that feel that genos wholesale genocide is appropriate, the people of the Andromeda Council were not going to allow that to happen. Not. <laughs> and that's, one of, that's another reason why they stepped in. And the, fi the final reason is that... Um, through this process that we're going through of of evolution and eventually transformation into becoming a higher dimensional world, um, they will help us to understand who and what our true cosmic heritage is uh, based on the different star systems and planets that have seeded this earth for many, many years because the, the, the multiple human races that you see on this planet, and I'm going to use color descriptions, as evidenced by a Caucasian man or a yellow Asian man or a red Native American, you know, we see evidence of at least five or six different races. It's no mistake that we don't look like each other. We don't look like each other because we're not from the same planet. We didn't all evolve here. We've been seated on this planet for many years. And so the people of the Andromeda Council have plans to visit openly with people of Earth, and they're going to correct some pretty bad historical lessons and teach us what our true cosmic heritage is about, A. B, they're going to help us understand what this evolution is that we're going through and help us prepare to make the step as we become higher dimensional people. That's, that's the complete answer on that one. Okay, great. I, I guess just out of my personal curiosity, there, my, uh, my understanding is that there, l like every civilization, there are the good and the bad. So I, I'm, I'm going on the assumption that there are somewhere good members of the reptilian galactic family members. Is there a particular branch of the reptilian family that is uh, particularly responsible for what has been going on, to your knowledge? Ah, yeah, good question. Um, here, here's what I know, and I'll, I'll break it down. 
The good, the bad, the ugly. Here we go. I'll start with the bad, the bad and the ugly. Based on what I've learned, the people, the reptilian people, primarily responsible for uh, the enslavement and abuse of people on Earth are the people from the constellations Draco, um, Hydra, the star system Sirius B, constellation Orion. The two primary ones that the Andromeda Council people, led by the people of Proson, have been dealing with, with the multiple underground and undersea bases, are the Draco and Hydra reptilians. Bad guys, bad news, evil, abusive. We are basically a natural resource to them. You get the idea. Uh, am I aware of what people would consider or call a good reptilian race? Yes, I am aware of one reptilian race which, compared to the others, this particular reptilian race is completely vegetarian. And the best analogy that I can use is, think of the very early years that we've been taught on this planet about dinosaurs. There were very clearly, and dinosaurs are reptilians, there were very clearly voracious, flesh-eating, meat-eating dinosaurs. There were also dinosaurs that wandered the swamps, like the brontosaurus and others, and they ate seaweed and algae, as an example. This particular reptilian race is a vegetarian race. And what I've learned is that they are gentle, they are intelligent, they are noble, they are wise, and they have no intentions of causing any problems with the people of Earth. Uh, moreover, I'm aware that one of their people helped with some, if you will, backroom intelligence to help the people of Procyon and the Andromeda Council to understand how the Draco and Hydra reptilian mind works, to help them understand what their motivations are. And so they've helped with some considerable, if you will, backroom intelligence to get at these Draco and Hydra reptilians and help take their bases out. Um, that, that's as much as I know on that front. Okay, that sounds great. So it's... I guess in terms of, and again, this is more out of my own curiosity. I'm not sure if this will make it into into the story or not, but sure, I I feel there seems to be a pattern where the number of galactic families that are a part of the Galactic Federation. I mean, the ones that I'm most immediately familiar with: the Andromedans, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, uh, and and several others. Uh, they appear to be handling the particular branches of uh, of either humanity or of the Illuminati cabal that are most directly ascend descended from those of their respective systems. Does that seem to ring a bell with you? Hmm. Okay, I, I'm going to answer what I think is your question. Uh, let me see um, if I can explain that better. I'm not no, sure. I, 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 I'm okay. If, if I wander off the reservation and give you the answer, let me know. But um, as an example, the, the, um, these four reptilian races, the Dracos, the Hydras, the Orion, and Sirius B, all four, both constellations and star systems, these reptilians are known to, and have been known to terrorize, and literally convert, reptilianize whole galaxies so that human DNA, human people are no longer reptilian. They actually take on a reptilian vibration. Uh, they consume humanoids or human hum humans as a consumable resource. And quite, quite frankly, they don't honor human life. They think we're cows, these reptilians. So they have no value for human life so far. The, the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that what the people of the Andromeda Council, and I, I, I can't speak for other 
of galactic entities, but I can speak to the motivations of the Andromeda Council. They felt it was appropriate and important to get these evil beings, these malicious reptilian beings, off this planet before our own evolution happens. So if you will, you know, wipe, wipe the slate clean, clean up the mess, get, you know, clean up the planet so it's tr it truly becomes our planet during, during our own transformation. And the people from Procyon freed themselves from these reptilians just about 12 years ago in Earth time. So they had some considerable experience doing it and freeing themselves. The one thing that I know that the people of the Andromeda Council won't do is get involved in human-to-human -human issues. As an example, they won't get involved in chasing down the arrests of human cabal Illuminati officials. They won't get involved in pursuing prosecution of human cabal Illuminati officials. They won't get involved in prosecution of bankers of human cabal Illuminati officials. Th th they draw a line when it comes to getting involved in human affairs. They don't do it. It was a hard it was a challenging leap, leap for them to step in to get the reptilians off of this planet and clean it up. But they felt that we had a right to evolve on our own after having been messed with for so many years. So the, if you will, the bankers use a term called the Chinese wall. The Chinese wall is, we will go up to, the, this is the Andromeda Council, we'll go up to that line that says, we will get involved and take out any uh, malevolent, um, uh, uh, you know, evil extraterrestrial force that is further trying to enslave your race. Our, our whole process of being here is to A, free you, B, educate and enlighten you, if you want it, on the way to your evolution. That's their, those are their, if you will, those are their two goals. And they don't cross that line. I have read and heard about other galactic organizations that will do that. I happen not to agree with it, but I don't know what their agenda is beyond what I've peripherally heard. And I would certainly always caution everyone about any galactic entity that wants to directly interfere in our affairs as humans to our human planet. It's our, we're, we're just getting our planet back. It's our job to address the issues of our planet, not some extraterrestrial races issue to interject their agenda or insert their own people. And I've heard some of that discussion happening. I don't agree with it. But that's my personal opinion. By the way, did you, just as an aside, did you, let me try, let me try this question differently. <laughs> did I convey the answer about disclosure uh, with the kind of clarity I was hoping? You know, and to break it down to a couple parts of win, no win. You know, because it's a no win scenario for the government. Right, exactly. It just is. Yep. Um, I didn't use those words, but. Right. As long as as long as they hold to this position, they're in a driver's seat. <laughs> you know, it's, they've got no incentive to change their mind. They, they just don't. Well, I suppose that could be argued as well, because as you said to me earlier, they will um, disclosure is going to happen regardless. So whether they think they're in the driver's seat or not is really is really irrelevant. That's right. Um, now, many people within the the, the 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 I guess what Benjamin Fulford calls the non-aligned nations, and I guess that is the the more politically correct term, you know, those that are part of the new alliance that are forming the, the new global economy, the pressure, yes. will, the, the pressure will be on the Western leaders and those who are still a part of the aligned alliance to either surrender their positions of power or to agree to participate in the new economy. Wow. Yeah, uh, no, I'm I've, not expecting you to comment on that. That's I'm yeah, sure no, 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 it's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly aware. Of the, I'm certainly aware of the fact that 
there will be a transition economy before money goes away. Right. And it's going to happen at least based on everything they've told me, based on how we calculate time today, about 10 and 12 years from a money-based economy down to a cooperative, collaborative, uh, sharing of resources economy. And by the time we get there, we will have replicators, matter producers, life will be a completely different. You know, we won't need money to build and create things because we'll have the technology to create it on our own. Absolutely. Create a wonderful Jeff evening. Jeffrey, it was a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Pleasure's mine. Have a good night. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.